it's Catherine, and today I wanted to talk about board games. Now, I'm not like a serious board gamer, but I enjoy like some of the more easy to learn games, and today I wanted to show some approachable board games that still have quite a bit of depth, but they don't take hours to learn in my opinion, they're still fun. Most of them offer some level of challenge and some level of thinking is the goal. So finding that good balance there. So starting right off, I wanted to go over like the more, uh, the more interesting ones that is to say, but that again, don't take forever to learn, aren't as complicated, don't take more than an hour and a half. Like that's kind of my personal maximum, just cause otherwise it's, too much for me to keep track of for a game and then too much for me to enjoy it to keep track of it personally so starting right off i think quirkle is a great choice i recently received this game as a birthday gift actually it might have been over a year ago now but i like it it's pretty easy to learn it's let's see here two to four players so a smaller group game but easy to learn and uh, not too many pieces. It's just mostly all of what you see on the board there and then you keep track of scores. I know I can explain all these games, but hopefully this can lead you to where to do your best research. Number two, I have this game and I think I'm pronouncing this right. It's called Tsuro. So you can see T-S-U-R-O. And it's an interesting looking game with all like the dragons and stuff. But it's pretty simple in that it's all the way up to eight players, so I appreciate that a big group can play it. And thankfully, the board is pretty simple, and you take turns creating a map for eight pieces. So eight different players, eight different pieces in theory, all trying to get across the board without getting sent off the board. Again, you can read into it more, but this can be a super quick game at like 15 to 20 minutes and you can do a couple rounds if people are still wanting to play the same game or whatever, but you're not committing to an hour and a half or having to learn more than like one page of rules. This was one of like the first like board games I learned after the next I'll mention, which is Catan. Uh, I don't personally own it, and I know it is well known and largely well played, but I still think it's like pretty approachable being a person who tends to be picky about their board games. It has a number of different elements while not being overly long and it's all concepts that largely make sense right off the bat. Buying and selling, um, placing all your color on the board to try and control different areas of the board. Stuff that I found pretty easy to learn, what, probably eight years ago now, I think I first learned Catan. Um, I haven't purchased it just because I know enough people own it and it's not personally one of my favorites, but I know it's popular enough where it's one I would encourage a newer board game player to learn because uh, a lot of people have it and then you can have more to play with friends. Two other older ones I want to talk about in the like approachable but still a lot of depth of play games are Clue and Scategories. Now Clue, I feel like almost everyone would probably know, it's a, quite an old game in my opinion. I grew up seeing it on my parents' board game shelf. And whatnot and I feel like it's kind of underrated sometimes I know there's a little bit of like guesswork and there's a little bit of just kind of simplistic clue finding to it but I feel like it's interesting enough where like a lot of different ages can play it it's not overly complicated and you can still have what like 60 players play it uh, Again, these aren't as complicated as a lot of what you'll find in like a, game, a board game store or whatnot, but approachable, easy to find in stores, and largely fun in my opinion. Uh, and then categories. So this one's a bit of a stretch on the board game end, but I think it, the amount of skill it takes to like fill out a complete card sometimes of 12 words starting, or 12 concepts I should say, starting with the same letter, can get kind of complicated, 
but my family's had a blast playing this. Uh, bigger groups of family, you don't even have to always use like the same, the, the fancy paper they include. Like we were starting to like, just pull office paper out to play and then you just set a timer. Everyone knows the same card. We had like pictures of the card up on our phones so we could all play the game. And it's fun to see what people come up with. It does, again, each round is short, but you can count points over time. You can have people kind of join in the middle even, which is probably my favorite part of this game, even if they may not win in the end. Um, I've done that myself, and it's still fun to jump into a game if you were talking with another group of people when the game started. So that is my fifth pick on the games I've already played already learned a little bit of skill i have a little bit of more to them than what i would maybe consider run of the mill i also wanted to pick what i call social games these are games that really don't have as much stuff they're very quick comparatively uh, there's really no like planning your turn at all hardly i leave out literally a 52 piece deck of cards here for Egyptian rat slap, rat race, how, whatever you call it. Um, it's on the card player's website, the card manufacturer's website. Not for this one, this is off brand, but still. So easy enough to find online the directions. And if you have a deck of cards, you can play this game. And it's more depth than like war, but it's also easy to learn quick to play, and I've enjoyed Egyptian Rat Race for probably half my life since seventh grade. So a seventh grader can learn it and still likes it. So that's that one. So the simplest, cheapest option. And I think it's pretty simple to learn compared to other games I've tried to learn to play, but it's still, it moves so quick. Even if like the game lasts like, I'd say 20 minutes if you're actually playing to the end where someone has all the cards, but again, you can look up those instructions. It's on like bicycle.com and I'm sure other card, playing card manufacturers have it too. Next pick is Spot It. Now, I think this is considered like more of a kid's game actually, ages seven to adult, yeah. So it's simple, like it's designed to be that way, but again, it keeps so small. It's easy to learn, it's quick to play, it's fun to play. It takes like like five minutes per round. So you can enjoy multiple rounds of it if you want. There's different ways to play it, I think is another compelling thing about this one. And yeah, anyone can really play it and enjoy it. Uh, the newest one I've heard about in the pile that I own in this uh, category is Happy Salmon. Uh, I was given this by a friend and in this one is literally 90 seconds long to play up to eight players which so a big group can play it similar to the others and age of six plus so again anyone of any age can really learn this this one's a more active one would be the stipulation where you got to be like around a small like ottoman like even smaller than this table perhaps and throwing cards down like making hand signals to like get rid of your cards because you got to do like fish bump as they call it and whatnot. So it's a funny yelling kind of game. Uh, there is a silent version in the instructions, but uh, I've played it with yelling fish bump because <laughs> it's salmon, so it's all fish themed. So it's funny, it's kind of cute. Uh, there's that. Two other social games. Uh, I really like Wits and Wagers. I think it's kind of fun to guess with that one. It's all about trying to figure out where a number would land between, oh, I don't own it, my parents do, but it's always been fun because it's such random questions and you always, somehow it always seems like it's hard to guess higher or lower and you're trying to like, quote unquote, wager how close you and others will get. And so I think it's kind of, fun bit of competition, a bit of guessing, but it also makes you think a little bit and it doesn't take too long, easy to learn. And I think like six to eight players again, I, I think, well, two to eight technically, but I think the cap is either six or eight. So that one's fun. Yeah, that's pretty much the social category where again, it goes fast, big group. Um, yeah, 
The third category is what I would call kind of simple, but requires some thinking. So we're talking past like sorry level, maybe past like trouble, past the games that are like really geared for like maybe kids and whatnot. But um, I know Jenga is probably marketed for kids, but I've had this game for years and it's still fun. It doesn't really require thinking, but it's quick and whatnot and yeah, easy to learn. Racco. Now I have my, I think this is my grandma's old copy of this game. Uh, my mom bought it for our family when I was growing up because she had remembered playing it. But it's all about getting your cards in order so you have to try and like uh, strategize to think which cards are going to help you best in which spots and this one's a smaller group game at four people maximum because that's just how many of these little trays but it's yeah simple enough and fun I would argue e yeah and easy to learn doesn't take too long uh, not even as involved as like Quirkle or whatnot uh, but definitely takes another minute versus these quick draw games and you don't have to like put your cards out as fast with this one you actually get like a turn it's a little slower paced and whatnot also to add to this is another classic sequence i played this at what feels like at this point all my life again easy to learn everybody knows the 52 card deck i feel like if you're even interested in playing games and you can have teams which i feel like is compelling for newer players too because you can have newer players play with the more experienced ones um yeah this one i guess the only stipulation is that it's easier with an even number of people unless you literally have three because there's three tokens so you can have up to three teams just because of how the game and the board are designed uh, also in this category is connect four and oh no this is the third one okay so yeah connect four that's a really small two-player game but again that one's nice and cheap everybody knows it quick enough um there's a lot of like pretty designed ones out there from home brands and whatnot kind of like there is for checkers but it's even easier and quicker than checkers which i think makes it more compelling um you see it at even yeah, like I've seen it at an arcade, a giant version, and that's still fun too. The last category I want to touch on is games that I actually want to try, or kind of, I think I played one once, but I don't really remember it. Uh, let's see here. It's called Mind the Gap. It's the generational game is what I kind of bill it as. Uh, it's all about like Gen X versus Y versus Z versus that, the boomers. Um, and I'd be curious... If it's just like trivia or whatnot, I don't, I feel like I'd rather play it before I buy it, but it looks like fun. And maybe it's just the marketing on the box. I don't know, but it looks fun because my family's in a number of different generations. So uh, it'd be nice to be the millennial to beat them. <laughs> so yeah, that is my take on some easy to learn and not overly time consuming games that I feel like are just really fun for hanging out with friends, uh, casual gameplay to a large extent where you're not taking half an hour per turn, you're, you can still chat with others as you're playing, which I think is important, um, at least in my opinion, and still able to have some strategy to it. So I also wanted to mention that there are some like, personal opinions that affect this list of games and what I consider fun games in my opinion. Um, the first is I dislike fibbing games as I like to call them. This is games where you have to kind of like try and convince the rest of the players that you're someone else or like try to figure out a way to make it seem like something else is accurate versus the truth. Um, the exception that comes to mind is the game Chameleon, where you're more trying to guess an option while everyone else has more information to guess than you do. And you have to kind of blend in as if you know the information the others know. Uh, the other factor is that I don't like learning like complicated games that take an hour and a half 
or more to either play and or learn. It's just not as much fun for me at that point. I'm sure I could get a decent handle on games and I, I just don't really enjoy the process and trying to understand just different layers of games like that. It's not something I enjoy um, at this point. Maybe that'll change in the future as I play games that are a little bit more complicated over time. Um, that may be what makes it fun for others is that learning curve or something. I am not totally sure as I'm not them. <laughs> the other thing is I think apples to apples style as I tend to think of it where everyone puts in a card that relates to the selector's card or whose ever turn it is. It's a game that has been adapted for different like TV shows, movies, topics, whatnot. I just kind of call it the apples to apples style. It's fun, but I kind of tend to think it's, it's a little bit overdone overall. Though those games are still largely fun. Uh, additionally, I enjoy some classic games. Uh, there are a lot of new great games out there. I mean, I just got Quirkle and Suro, uh, but this old Rackle game is super fun to me and it's definitely, I think it's older than I am. It wouldn't shock me. Uh, if, But I think some of those old games are really fun to play and that's also why I brought up games like Clue. Uh, that and something like a deck of 52 cards, that's really classic to me as well. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that's fun. I just think that's probably a bias I have as I thought about selecting some games to mention here. So I hope that helps provide some context and uh, that, so, that the rest of y'all can benefit from this and that it'll inspire you to think of new games that might be similar, that hopefully you like some of these games. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.